Let's put our minds together as one and remember the ones who passed on to the sky. Hello, we are Art Heels, the Jingle Dress Project. Missing and murdered Indigenous women is an issue that has greatly impacted our lives as Native women and has been one of the important aspects of the Jingle Dress Project. Native women experience murder 10 times the rate of any other ethnicity in the United States. We have reached out to multiple community members, leaders, politicians, artists, and educators to discuss this issue in our communities. We have combined their stories, experiences, actions, and resources into one video so you can learn about this important issue and spread awareness in your community. Hi, my name is Eugene Tepahi. I am the creator of Art Heals at Jingle Dress Project. Even before this project, I have been a huge advocate for MMIW through my photography and through my personal life. This topic has hit close to home as one of my relatives is still missing. This is the reason why I wanted to make this a part of the Jingle Dress Project. Your voice can be used to amplify awareness and create space for these conversations. What's up everybody, this is Taboo from Black Eyed Peas and I am um, gonna speak from the heart, candid, transparent, and let you guys know the importance of uh, creating the conversation, something that's very important to me as a person that has been brought up by the matriarch system. My grandmother being the most important person in my life, uh, the leader, the um, go-to person for not only motivation, but also um, to stay connected to my roots. Um, so it's very uh, personal to me to be able to bring awareness um, about our sisters and, and aunties and, you know, um, mothers, grandmothers that are gone missing. Um, with the platform that I have, I like to shine light on Indian country as much as possible, especially with um, situations like this, where it's a personal journey for me, um, speaking on being a father of a daughter, um, having an amazing wife. It's always been part of my narrative to celebrate and honor women. Um, especially when it comes to situations like this where we highlight our missing sisters. Um, and this is something very personal to me. For too long, um, indigenous women and children and um, two spirits and really all of our relations have been in peril in this land. And I join with all of my indigenous relations who um, continue to pray and to remember and to dance for the safe return of our relations and for the health and balance of the world. Waklao. Hi, my name is Taspan Nutawi and I am from the Oglala Lakota tribe in South Dakota. And I just want to talk about how I've been bringing awareness to MMIW lately. And that is through conversation. Um, I like to bring up that topic anytime that I can or anytime anyone talks about anyone missing. I bring up that subject of a lot of MMIW that have not been solved and not being followed. Um, I think it is very important to bring it to everyone's attention because when you talk about it every day and you bring it up to people who have no idea, who are not indigenous, it sparks something in their head. And when they hear about it, they um, can tell other people about it. And that's how you can bring a lot of awareness is to spark that in everyone. May 5th, 2022 is National Day of MMIW Awareness, and it is reminding me 
why we do the work that we do as an MMIW organization. We hold space for people and each other in our community to have uncomfortable conversations, to have conversations that bring tears, that can be sad, that can be angering, but they're important. Having conversations surrounding this crisis are extremely important for people that don't know the depth of this crisis and how they can help contribute and combat this crisis. Uh, we need to keep having these conversations and not only raising awareness, but working together to find allies and resources and being a conduit for change and finding ways to come together to help people heal. Uh, when people are recovered, that's just the start of a journey of healing and having the conversations can help those people heal even more. Um, I hope on this, this day of awareness, you're able to figure out your place and how you can contribute. Native people are often asked to talk about our culture and heritage, but only want an idealized version. This limits our voices when we start talking about real issues. Desi Hendershot shares her experience. A few years ago, I went to a school to do a presentation on Native Americans. Beforehand, I had submitted a slide deck with all of the subjects that I would cover, one of them being MMIW. When I got there, I was asked not to cover that specific subject. All of the other ones okay, were okay for me to address, but not that one. What's interesting is the fact that for our own students and our own children on Indigenous nations, they don't have the luxury of that option. For many of them, they are dealing with these gaping absences of family members who should be playing a critical role in the development of their lives. Those women are not there for them. And with unanswered questions and unresolved issues, our own children have to carry that burden without the luxury of getting the chance to opt out. Desi is not alone in this experience. Oftentimes, Native voices are silenced. Silenced because the outer public does not want to address these difficult issues. Community is a crucial aspect of our lives, and it's important to know that we have people who are supporting and advocating for these issues. Hi, I'm Jordan Marie Brings, who at Horses Daniel and the founder and organizer of Rising Hearts. I am here to um, just talk about May 5th. It's coming up. It's going to be a big week for so many families who have lost loved ones, advocates, survivors, um, and the organizations that are in this work every single day trying to raise awareness and trying to protect our bodies, our communities, and our next generations. This is all about being in community. This is about elevating. This is about creating spaces for the families to be voices. Um, this is about supporting the hard work that it goes into this every single day to fight for justice and for healing. And I just really hope that you are part of this in this virtual community or in person with us. Um, and it's just really important to to continue to elevate, to amplify, to hold space, create space, um, and make sure that, you know, Indigenous peoples are protected, our bodies are protected, and that we can protect our communities and protect, you know, our next generations. And so, Wopi Latanka, many thanks, and I hope to see you virtually or in person. Tonse, Kagi, Manitogan, Esquail, Nihiao. Hello, my name is Forever Spirit Woman. I come from the Treaty 4 area in Saskatchewan the Kawakatoos and Pipots First Nation. I do make my home in Mokinsis, which is the Treaty 7 area of Calgary, Alberta. I am heavily involved. My family is heavily involved in the advocacy work of MMEIP, Missing and Murdered Exploited Indigenous Peoples. Our sister is on the list. She was murdered by a Starlight Tour here in Calgary, and her murder was never investigated or solved. My sisters and I are heavily involved in ensuring families come first in this movement. We organize rallies and marches and support services for families and will continue to do until there is not a concern or issue with our people being targeted and marginalized and killed and murdered. Hi, hi. Bennett. My name is Ali McKnight and I'm Shoshone Bannock and I'm an artist. Um, my art primarily is centered around our Indigenous women, girls, and all those who identify as femme. And each of my paintings holds a moment for healing and a love for indigeneity. 
and I hope that through my art, I can continue to support our Indigenous survivors, the families and communities that have lost loved ones, and I hope that they feel, that our people feel seen and respected. Um, us, and a big thank you to those that continue to do the work to help our women, girls, and all those who identify as a woman feel safe and supported. Greetings, my name is Great Grandmother Mary Lyons. I'm Anishinaabe from the Leech Lake Band of Ojibwe. It's an honor to share this space as we move forward with platforming the lack of knowledge of the missing and murdered Indigenous relatives. It is long overdue that we have not been invited to the table of justice to bring forth the lack of attention of our missing relatives. As we move forward, bringing a much too long awakening, we are moved by all the Indigenous individuals that have a seat in the offices where decisions are being made for us. Maybe now they'll get it right. May each of you educate yourself to all the extra steps that us Indigenous people have to do to be heard. Remember, if it's happening in our neighborhoods, it will be happening in yours. So let's move forward together and bring closure to the ones that need it. And to the ones still searching, let them know you stand with them and you'll search with them. Here in Minnesota, we have jumped through the hurdles in our non-Native governments, and we believe in all the other states and the neighboring Canada that we will support and stand with them. We will no longer be defeated. We will no longer be silenced. There'll be no more waiting. Not one more of our relatives will be stolen or missing. Chini Witch for keeping the movement alive and loud. Hi, I'm Shauna White Bear, owner of White Bear Moccasins, located here in Bozeman, Montana. Native American women are most stalked, raped, and murdered in America. Montana are home to 12 tribes on seven different reservations. Currently, there are 28 women that are missing. There are so many murder cases that have so many unanswered questions that still haunts us. These women deserve the same national coverage that any other women has. So please share. Please educate your community about the tribes nearby by any type of missing woman liar to share it because that's the only way I will continue to educate my community on any missing any missing person especially our women involving those around you is vital to this movement consider ways to involve your company network, and circle of influence to spread awareness of the MMIW on a larger scale. My name is Taylor McNally and I'm the co-creator of Inclusive Canada. Bringing awareness to the ongoing genocide that is missing, murdered, and exploited Indigenous women, men, two-spirit, non-binary, and trans peoples is a responsibility of us all. As a person with intersecting oppressed identities, I am committed in solidarity to ensuring this matter is not only talked about, but acted on, and ensuring we create a future where Indigenous peoples can not only survive, but thrive. Through my organization, we continue to share data, education, and calls to action. We continue to work closely with groups such as the Bear Clan Patrol Calgary to provide alternatives to the harmful systems and institutions that uphold the harm against Indigenous peoples, such as creating alternatives to policing. I continue to refer back to the White Flying Goose Report, the 94 calls to action in the TRC, and the 231 calls for justice in the final report of the National Inquiry into Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and Girls. Black and Indigenous Solidarity Forever. Hi, my name is Gretchen, and I've been honored to serve and help with projects in the Navajo Nation with the nonprofit organization Navajo Strong. Today, on the National Day of Awareness for Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women, we honor and remember the voices of women who have been silenced. And we commit to doing our part as allies and partners in empowering women and indigenous communities as they strengthen the world around them. Last year I had the opportunity to uh, become a part of the Indigenous Prayer Run 
um, that my wife got uh, us involved in. Um, through that process, I saw a unique opportunity to become a mentor to a community that often doesn't have access to uh, coaches or to people with my skill set. Um, what I was able to watch was a group of runners that were really, really inspiring. The indigenous runners uh, that I had the opportunity to work with hold a very dear place in my heart. Uh, rarely do runners get the opportunity from indigenous cultures to participate in uh, races such as Boston. Um, it's the most prestigious race in the world, but it's also generally prohibitive for uh, indigenous runners to get into, uh, whether it be lack of training or uh, it can be uh, cost prohibitive. The opportunity to provide an experience that allowed them to proudly display the culture, uh, to represent their people, and to show the nation, the world, that they're still here, that, that they're not forgotten, and that they're a beautiful people, and they represent a beautiful culture, and one that should be celebrated. I enjoy mentoring Indigenous runners and helping them amplify their voices because I used to be a news reporter and many times Indigenous stories were not told by the mainstream media. It is an honor to be an ally and mentor to the Indigenous running community. It brings me great joy to mentor Indigenous runners, help them dare to dream what's possible and run alongside them. My name is Rachel Salinas. I'm the National President for the Intertribal Council of at and Employees. One of the ways we set out to bring awareness for MMIW here in Dallas was to turn the skyline red. We reached out to local businesses in partnership with MMIW Texas Rematriate. We wrote letters and asked that they turn red on May the 5th to honor our missing and murdered indigenous women. We got responses from several businesses, including at and headquarters, at and Discovery District, and the Bank of America Plaza. I'm happy to announce that again this year on May the 5th, the same businesses have agreed to honor our MMIW by lighting up red. Hello, my name is Charmaine Jackson. I'm director of Malkia Productions. I live in New Mexico where Albuquerque and Gallup are on the top 10 U.S. cities on the MMIW list. In honor of May 5th, National MMIW Awareness Day, and May 6th, we are hosting a two-day tribunal to record the testimonies of the families here in five states that we've invited to come. And with those recorded testimonies, we're going to take them to Washington, D.C. and give them as public record to the officials that need to hear it. And I just want to say thank you to the families that come out. You're very courageous. Thank you to all the heroes out there that are healers, that are social workers and counselors that help these families. Keep fighting the fight. We will get over this one day. Yeah. One way you can be an advocate is supporting Indigenous politicians. They create legislation that is able to address these issues. As a community member, we can all participate in the democratic system and we all have a voice. Minnesota is taking the historic trauma of missing and murdered Indigenous relatives seriously. We're leading the way and we're dedicated to answering the painful questions, owning the generational trauma and making good change, positive change, not just for now and for our children and grandchildren, but for the next seven generations. Hamatakiyapi, Ampetu Kinle, Minnesota Senator Mary Kunishimakiyapi, Ma Lakota, and I'm the first woman of native descent to represent Minnesota in the state Senate. I'm proud to have passed legislation to create a comprehensive missing and murdered indigenous women's task force. Three years later, that task force is done, and then we established the first in the nation permanent office of the missing and murdered indigenous relatives. Right now, I'm working on a reward fund to tease out information on cold cases and create a specialty license plate to fund the missing and murdered indigenous relatives office. We hear you, Tiwahe, and we stand with all of you today, May 5th, 
the National Day of Recognition of Our Missing and Murdered Indigenous Relatives. Wopulatanka Chimigwich Piamia. Dosha Madashi Mia Adeshids Ma Be Sigids Ma Zigidads Nakbaga O. Hello, good people. My name is Ruth Buffalo. I'm originally from Mandaree, North Dakota. Currently live in Fargo, North Dakota, proudly representing District 27 in the North Dakota State House of Representatives. How I have helped with the National Day of MMIW Awareness is to continue to be a helper, continue to be a good relative, uh, raising awareness to prevent further tragedies from happening, trying to work upstream to get to the root causes of the epidemic. Um, as a state legislator, I've had the honor and privilege to introduce new laws to tackle the issue, but again, very proud of what we do at the community level locally. So, Madzagidads, thank you. My name is Stacey Dantosi, and I was asked to talk about the importance of missing and murdered Indigenous women. Um, the reason why I think MMIW is important is because it is symptomatic of a larger problem. Um, and when we look at MMIW in context of colonization um, and thinking about colonization tactics that took place such as sexual assault and rape against our women, children, um, and men, it illustrates a larger problem that this issue is generation intergenerational. It spans um, from the moment that Columbus arrived. Um, and it is not coincidence. This is a long ranging problem that can be addressed. And I think that it is important for people to know about it so that they can um, use their votes to keep um, policies in place that protect indigenous people, such as VAWA and voting as often as possible to promote tribal sovereignty um, so that we have access to resources to better protect our women and children. Um, part of what I'm doing as an indigenous woman in Northern Utah to bring attention to MMIW is using my social media platform, Navajo Darling, as well as writing about it in my stories. Um, and that is the effort that I am taking and it does not come with, um, it does not come easily. It is a very difficult topic to talk about. Um, and I think it is so important. It is so important that, that specifically Utahns know about this, that it is that we are one of the top 10 locations that um, indigenous women go missing and murdered. Um, and that's, that's why I think it's important and that's why individuals should care. Protect us with your votes, protect policies that um, uplift tribal sovereignty and when you see any posts related to it, look for us. Look for, look for our women. Look for our women like you looked for Gabby Petito, because we matter too. We need to be aware of what is going on in our communities and support our politicians and educators because they are impacting our future. As we come to a close for this video, we hope you were able to learn more about this devastating issue and feel empowered to make change in your own areas. My name is Gil Agater. I live in Briar, Washington, north of Seattle. I'm a retired news editor. I worked in newspapers, digital, television, and radio. Uh, I had a lot of success, uh, but I do have some regrets, and one of those is not doing enough uh, surrounding the national problem murdered and mis missing indigenous women. Um, we have a big problem in this country and more should, attention should be called to it. And I could, I could have done more, um, but we can still do more. You can do more, I can do more. Uh, we can share stories that we see in the news on social media so other people can find out about this problem. Uh, we can pressure our elected officials to do something about it. We can we, uh, ask the police, we can demand more from the police. We don't have to uh, sit by and let another daughter or sister or mother or aunt or grandmother go missing uh, in America. Greetings, my name is Waylon Pahona. I'm Hopi, Tewa, Maricopa Pipash, and I support the MMIW movement. I support the Jingle Dress Project as a son, as a father, as an uncle, 
as a nephew, as a brother, as a grandson. I support our indigenous women. These women are the root of us as indigenous men. The women teach us to be strong, to be humble, to carry that knowledge on and to protect them. And I'll always be in support of our indigenous women. And I challenge you, I challenge you to support our women, not just one day out of the year wearing red and not to be complacent. If you know something, speak up, share, protect our women. Let's continue to support our women and let their voices be heard. Hello, my name is Anthony Falcone and I am the National Vice President of the Intertribal Council of AT&T Employees, a 501c3 nonprofit, and I am also a published author. Joining our good friends at Art Heals or Jingle Dress Project to promote awareness for missing and murdered Indigenous women, or MMIW, we have some initiatives to bring to light this epidemic sweeping this country. One of those initiatives is a Tribal Talk episode produced by our organization to give people affected by MMIW a platform to tell their stories in the hopes of educating the public about the crisis. You can help as well by educating yourself and being an ally to your local MMIW groups helping to find individuals who go missing. There's much work to be done, but together we can accomplish much. Thank you. Hello everyone, Michelle Brown here on behalf of Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women and Relatives Utah. And I just want to say, let's keep the conversation going about our missing and murdered Indigenous women and relatives. It's still an ongoing issue. So whether it's someone close to you or someone you just met who may not know that this is still an ongoing issue, let's continue to empower our community with knowledge that this is still happening and then find solutions to move forward. You can look for organizations that support Indigenous women and advocate for Indigenous voices and just continue to spread the word. We appreciate all that you do. We want to thank those who have participated in this collaboration and for the words you've shared with us. We know not everyone watching this video is Native American, so we invite you to get involved in this movement and in creating a better future for our communities. We hope you learned something from the stories that were shared today, and we hope that you continue to start conversations in your own communities. Ahihat. sky world their life's duties are complete they are living peacefully in the sky world in the sky